Thanks for clicking on this video and being a pal. I sure appreciate it. Why don't I just jump into the topic at hand, which can be boiled down to, does anybody know you? Does anybody know the real you 100%? Or are there parts of you that you keep hidden away from certain people or maybe everyone? I asked this question because it, I came to a realization recently that uh, I don't think that there's anybody who really knows everything about me or there, who hasn't, there isn't anyone who has seen 100% of me. Now I know, but let me just cut this off before some of you say it. I'm not talking about God. I'm talking about our fellow human beings. Yeah, God knows us 100%, sure. But I'm talking about the fellow earthlings, the fellow uh, travelers on this. Um, I felt like th there's a Shakespeare quote there, isn't there? Uh, I don't, uh, my brain is drawing a blank. So if you imagine it like this is this is such an original uh, symbol or metaphor, like a hall with a lot of doorways in it is you, the authentic you. I give keys to those different doors to different people in my life, and maybe I've even given all all the keys away to every door, but there's no one person who has all the keys. There maybe are some people who have most of them. Like, let's not, I'm not here to say that you or I are that special. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that there are people who know me 90%, maybe 95, maybe even let's say 99% of, you know, me, uh, whatever that means. But there's still a little bit that I keep from everyone. Maybe there's something that I've never given to anyone. Maybe there's a little part of me that I've never revealed. And it's funny because I'm going back and forth in my podcasts, the last podcast episode about identity, link in the description, I, get, I draw the conclusion that a lot of identity is really just based on an illusion. So when I'm talking about me, how much of that is even real? How much of that is even immutable? or, you know, the parts of me that I share with other people, that I let other people see now, it's really just a snapshot of me at this moment. Who knows how long it'll be there? Even with family. I mean, my family knows me pretty much almost 100%, but there's still little bits that I keep to myself. And I suppose that it is a defense mechanism in a way, because... If you give some, if you have a hundred doors in your heart and you give someone 99 of the keys, if they end up uh, turning on you, at least you still have one place that they can't get to, you know? And now that I say that, I suppose, <laughs> I suppose, Frank, are you saying you don't trust anyone? Uh, maybe that is what I'm saying. Uh... It's difficult to trust people, and I feel like that's probably something that, because I imagine a lot of you in the audience are similar to me, that maybe you you understand people well enough that it makes you not want to trust anybody. I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. Maybe it's just me. I, it would seem that I have difficulty. It's not that I'm not open with people. I feel like I'm open with lots of people. Just not 100%. 99% sure. Well, what do you hold back, Frank? You might ask. I'm not sure. I'm not even certain that I'm consciously holding anything back or if it's anything that is that you can put a finger on. Maybe it's just like not letting someone see all the subtleties and the true colors of what you think and feel. You know, kind of smoothing it out. Giving the the radio edit of your inner world to somebody, you know? And I've done that too. It's not all just about self-preservation. There have been times where it's like, I don't want... I worry that I'm going to hurt this person if I'm honest with them. Even if, you know, not saying like, 
<laughs> honesty, like you look awful in those clothes, but honesty, just like maybe they will be sad because they'll find out that I'm not who they really think I am, which is, that's kind of messed up, isn't it? Shouldn't, shouldn't people just know the authentic me? But sometimes I feel like I'm playing this uh, big charade with some people in my life. And maybe, oh dear Lord, maybe everyone, maybe I'm playing this game with everyone to some degree. Oh gosh. What sparked this is I was talking to one of my ex-girlfriends, one of my many, no, she, we dated for a long time. We dated for five years and we're still friends now. And we were on the phone a few weeks ago and she, I don't know how it came up, but she was like, wow, I've never, I, you know, I've never seen you get angry before. And it struck me as odd because it's like, I, <laughs> I feel like I carry around a lot of anger and I just never let her see that side of me. I kind of edited it out. Saying the word edited it, those two words together, it's difficult. Edited it out. I'm sure there are people in my life that know me well enough that if they got the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say, they would not be shocked by it. They'd be like, okay, yeah, it makes sense. But I'm sure there are other people in my life, people who, who are not like the closest of friends, but some people who would just be like, whoa, I didn't, I didn't realize that there was all this other stuff to you. But maybe I'm wrong. Let's get real. All right, so <laughs> let's, let's soften the realness. I'm special, you're special, we're all special, but let's get real. We're not that special. Like, we think we're very complex and we have all these things that we're hiding from people. You know, the door with the sacred key that I'm keeping for myself. No one can get to it. Uh, maybe it, <laughs> it might just all be like a game we're playing with ourselves. Like, maybe other people would be like, yeah, I, door was never locked. I knew it was there the whole time. Uh, um... I think we like to feel like, oh, this is not me trying to make fun of us, us all, but maybe it is. We feel like we're special and we're so complex and deep, and we are, but maybe sometimes we overestimate, well, either we overestimate that about ourselves or we underestimate other people's ability to appreciate and see that within us. Sometimes maybe we feel like we're being very closed off when in fact we're not as closed off as we thought or we're not as good at guarding ourselves as we thought. This brings up something that I learned about. It's, it's interesting because here's like the devil's advocate part of it because I, like, I feel like I reserve a lot of myself from other people and don't let them see it. But there's something I learned about this week called The Illusion of Asymmetrical Insight, which perhaps you've heard of, but that basically um, says the idea, it's a cognitive bias that I think I know myself better than you know yourself, and I also know you better than you know yourself. And if you think about it, it's like, oh man, yeah. <laughs> I kind of have been buying into that bias for a while. It's kind of funny to realize that this is a thing, right? Because <laughs> there are so many times when you're like, oh man, this person's such a jerk, he doesn't even know it. Oh man, look at this person. I, I know everything about them. I even said it in, in my video, the INFJ stare. Man, we're reading them like a book. But maybe uh, even if they seem not so self-aware, maybe they know stuff about themselves that we are not picking up. Maybe we're picking up the wrong thing. Part of this uh, illusion of asymmetrical insight is that we think other people, in the way they talk and the way they act, are giving away a lot of clues about what they're really thinking. It's like they just can't help it. It's all these tells. Meanwhile, we think we're not really revealing much about ourselves. So I'm guessing the truth is to temper both of those things and be like, we probably um, are about as readable as everyone else. I mean, with varying degrees. Some people definitely easier to read than others. And I assume most people probably know themselves just as well as you know yourself. 
and maybe you don't know yourself as well as you think you do. I think, well, there's different ways of knowing thyself, you know? Plus, the other thing is, you're so close to it. I mean, you're not close to it. You're in it. You are yourself. So seeing yourself accurately is a difficult thing. Even if you are good at picking up patterns and seeing big pictures and understanding huge complex systems, it's a little different. It's a little difficult when you are in the system and the system is in you. You are a part of it. You can't really see it. It's like the eye can't see itself. Ooh, we're getting deep here, man. But yeah, even so, I don't, I'm not sure that there's any one person who knows me 100%. Maybe there is. Maybe they've seen through me. Maybe some of you, you've seen right through me, man. This really isn't a question of being authentic either because you can be authentic and only show part of your authentic self. You know what I'm saying? How do you feel about this? Do you think that there are people in your life who know you 100%? I would like to hear what your thoughts on this are. If you haven't checked out the podcast on identity, check it out. Perhaps I've contradicted myself a little bit, even in this, this video. If you missed it in the last video, uh, the next book that we're going to be reading for Book Club is A Gentleman in Moscow. You can get it in uh, a link below. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you leave a comment letting me know your feelings on it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, stay cool and attractive. Thank you.